we've already we just started, and we've already made a mistake. Which was to not get the wine out. To not get the wine out. To not get our glasses out. <laughs> well, it's going to make a little noise. But it will I make some noise, that. but no one's here yet, so we're good. Go. I mean, we're recording, but you know. Hey guys, welcome to Newsworthy. Overlook the 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 noise in the background. We're getting some wine glasses out, and that's always a good sign. Uh, means we're getting out some chilled, very cold, sweet red wine because of you, all of you, all six hundred and forty nine of you, <laughs> or at least six hundred and forty nine times you all have decided to download us and listen to us. We that's why we're it. getting it out. Yeah. The reason we're drinking cold, sweet red is because that's the way civilized people do it. Absolutely. And if you don't agree with that, then um, you're wrong. But, hey, that's okay. That's uh, your choice. That's your choice. You have the right to be wrong. We live in the greatest country God gave man. so um, And that gives us the right to be wrong on occasion. Uh, yeah, very good. Cheers. Oh, my gosh. That is... Okay, listen. We've drank... Uh, we have drank about, what, six different bottles of wine? Probably somewhere around there. By, hey, Double. Double has just joined us. She missed all the Welcome shenanigans. Back. Good for you. You didn't hear the glasses clink. Um, but we've drank... We've drank... Six or seven different wines so far because of our listeners and, and the growth. Tonight's another example of that. But this Stella Rosa Black is good stuff. It's good stuff. It's, it's by Rosa far, period, but yeah, the by far my favorite wine. I am glad to hear it, uh, glad to drink it. And, you know, I would probably, not saying I've done this because I haven't, and that's the truth, but I would download every different way of of downloading podcasts and then downloading all of our podcasts just to get the numbers to have more Stella Rosa wine. <laughs> That's so good. Yep. And it's not like it's a crazy expensive wine. No, cheap. That's reserved for those, the crap that you and I think is bitter or is junk and, yeah, type wines that we don't like. Hooey. Oh, man. Tonight is, uh, once again, welcome to Newsworthy. We're going to be covering a really, really hard topic tonight, a difficult one. Uh, only one tonight. Um, and it's one that we actually saw in the news, what, a month ago, two months ago? Like and it's just kind of been back there pecking, peck, 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 pecking at the back of our head. Should we do it? Should we not do it? And, and I think one of the things that kept us from doing it for a while was that it was dark. It was that it was yeah sad. It's not, you know, it, we're not going to, at any point in this, have a breakthrough when we say, you know, yay, that this is a great topic that people are going to love to hear about. So, yeah, it, it's not one of those, unfortunately. No, no, but. No teasing. We're going to tell them what it is. Yeah, we're going to talk about. Uh, Voluntary human euthanasia today, uh, and this kind of stems. It it, it kind of stems. I have a friend that uh, had to put down a, a dear friend of hers, um, animal wise. Uh, I had to put down my Harold Jean not uh, a couple of months ago, and that article coincided with Harold Jean a lot, and and it was just you know working through those because pets become our kids. You know, yeah. pets become part of the family. Yeah. And, you know, you don't want to see your pet suffer. And when you when you get to a spot where they are suffering, um, you have to make a decision. When is their quality of life, and I'm using air quotes, uh, when is it time? Because you, you, you know, and in a lot of states and a lot of countries, we don't have that option to even have that discussion with humans, Kentucky being one of them. Very true. Um, but we'll save all that for a minute. You know, we always are asking for um, feedback. We like constructive criticism. We like to know if we're doing good, if we're not doing good. This week we got some amazing feedback from some amazing folks. You can leave feedback or tell Jerry which of the uh, – 
No. Uh, yes. No. I, or was your, what? Which of the – no, no. We do not want to send Jerry Foot picks. Yeah. Anything but that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you can, actually, it'd be all right if you said Jerry Foot picks. Not. It would not hurt my feelings at all. I don't care. Jerry really digs them. But if you want to send Jerry your favorite uh, massage parlor, uh, he would love to hear it and try it out. He'll be. I actually don't need any tips there. I <laughs> seem to be doing quite well. Uh, you're the one that needs a few tips and a bit of advice never, on that. Never, never been to one, ever. Okay. And uh, don't really have a desire to go. You, uh, you're married. You you have to. You don't really have a choice. That has to be the, the official line. <laughs> no, not really. Have you, have you, have you met her? Because <laughs> that really is. Hey, Brett, we're welcome. We're glad you're Hello, here, man. Brett, long time no see, bud. Um, so, uh, anywho, where was I going with that? The email. Oh, yeah, yeah, the email. We got some People great, care. great feedback. We love the feedback. We need more massage parlors and feet picks for Jerry. <laughs> we no need, things. we would love to have your great ghost stories, average, anything that you feel we can use to make this, this show better. This is your show. We want to do that for you. And they can send it where? Uh, Steve and Jerry at newsworthy at gmail.com. All one word. Woo! All right, I'm, I've talked. Is that it? What? I thought it was the other way. I thought it was newsworthy with Steve and Jerry. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> newsworthy first. Newsworthy. newsworthy with Steve and Jerry, gmail.com. <laughs> yeah. See, I haven't even, I haven't even got through the Unless first Unless it's foot picks, in which case you send it to the one that Steve mentioned. Oh, All no. those go there. No, you like them, Jerry. Don't lie. Okay. <laughs> Brent says he's been listening to us all day. That makes my heart yeah. happy. I, I'm giving you the heart emoji, J Brett. Thank you so much. The online air heart emoji. Yeah. So um, you were talking about Robin a little while ago. That's right. You know, she says that I don't give her enough privacy. Really? Yeah. Well, that's what her diary says anyway. Well, <laughs> Some people. Yeah, the nerve. <laughs> I really had trouble picking out my joke this week to, to use. I had two or three, but there was one that I really liked. It was a time traveling joke, but turns out you didn't like it. So, <laughs> just really don't know what to go with. <laughs> How was your week, bud? Oh man, it's a great week. Um, been doing double duty all week. I got it almost over. Uh, training's almost over, thank goodness. Uh, it's going to be a good fit, I think. Good. You know, uh, it's going to be very fulfilling helping some old folks out. Uh, it's going to be an opportunity to expand my business, you know, dealing with uh, a lot of folk. And it just it's a whole nother group of people that I may or not have came in contact with. Absolutely. Uh, yes, elderly, I apologize. I shouldn't use old folk. Elderly folk. <laughs> Um, but, uh, you know, it's a whole nother group of folk that I can use. So it's all going to work out great. Um, it is very tiring. I put in, uh, 60 ish hours last week and cruising towards 70 ish this week. So that's why I saw all those smiles on Robin's face when I passed from the road. Oh, oh, oh yeah, probably so. I'm gone for that amount of time. Whew. I know. I have a home office, <laughs> so I don't even know what the problem is here. I don't get it. True. Hey, Brett, I just want you to know that tonight, we every time we hit a milestone with the podcast, we break into some sweet red wine. And a couple of things we've learned, if you've listened to the podcast and caught up, is we like a sweet red and we like it cold, as cold as we can get it. Absolutely. And tonight, Stella Rosa Black is the favor of the flavor, and it's delicious. Probably the all-time favorite. Delicious. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> he says, I like wine. <laughs> <laughs> I think everyone likes wine, especially when it's a cold, sweet red. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. So we always try to fit in a little time for a small 
localized business. Right. The one I have today is if you're ever in Cynthiana, and I experienced this a couple last couple of times I've been there. The last time I was there was the bike show. Um, right on Main Street is Cup on Main. Or the Main Cup. I'm sorry. The Main Cup. It's a coffee house. Uh, nice little place. Well done. It used to be an old house. Uh, it was actually half a block from my grandfather's. Funny story for this whole thing. That's why I'm, I'm using them this week. Not only is their coffee delish, they make it any way that you want it to be. Um, and they have awesome baked goods. They have this caramel muffin. Bana- it, it's a banana nut muffin that has caramel sauce and sugar dripped on top of it. If you can eat this whole thing and and stand still for a day, I, I'm impressed. It, it is so... Sounds amazing. It is. And uh, but anyway, Main Cup is a great place to go. Good coffee. They're open, I think, all day. I know they're open for breakfast and lunch. But uh, um, the reason I bring them up, other than the good coffee, because I am a coffee connoisseur. Love coffee. Um, a dirty cha. Hmm. Interesting. With almond milk and sweetener, please. Huh. Anywho, so my grandfather used to live this. Main Cup sits on Main Street, and to the right of it, if you're looking at the building, there's a little alleyway, and my grandfather used to live in that alleyway, so anytime I go to Cynthia Ann, I like to walk back there. The house is gone. It's been gone since we had the big flood, and I think that was 95, 96, we had the big flood there. Been gone a long time. Yeah, been gone a long time, and uh, but there's still bricks there from where he had a brick patio. I actually took one a few years back and it's at my house now, but I always walk back there and just remember, you know, follow, following the memories. And well, the church sits on the left side of main cup and the church, there's a parking lot behind it and they redid all of the driveways to make it easier to get folks in and out of church. I didn't know this. And it's all brand new, fresh concrete. It all matches. And I was like, you know, okay, I'm sitting there. I'm drinking my coffee. I'm walking. I step up on a curb. I didn't think anything of it. And then I caught my foot on another curb and fell flat on my butt. Oh, well, it was fine. I didn't get hurt. But my coffee went for like 35 feet. I'm sure. And the worst part? There was two people that had just got off their bikes and was heading to the bike show that watched me do this. <laughs> They're like, oh, dude, are you okay? And I'm like, yeah. Pride's hurt a little bit. Pride's hurt. Other than that, I'm okay. Otherwise, I'm good. I scuffed my boots. But other than that, it was it was good. But Main Cup, Cynthia Ann, if you're ever in, ever in that direction, stop in there and see those folks. Good folks. 7 a.m. to 2.30 p.m.? I just looked them up. Oh, sweet. Um, Look at you. Six days a week, closed on Sunday. Do open at 9 on Saturday, but otherwise 7 a.m. I think we need to start getting the big bottles. <laughs> probably right. <laughs> Consider Although not tonight. We almost, your wife had a very good point. Was this the topic that we should be doing while drinking wine? We, we tend to be a little more light, giggly. Uh, that, that's certainly not the way that we want to come across with this issue. I, re- I resemble that remark. Absolutely. A couple of cups of this, and I think we both resemble that remark dramatically. So, I, in some of the comments we got um, from some of the people who listen to the show, uh, one of them said, you guys should go an hour and a half, two hours. Would that be a problem? And I was like, uh, no, because we usually talk for an hour before the show, and then after the show, we're still debating the stuff we did in the show for another hour, but we really feel that that's probably too much for you guys to try to listen for to, of, it's for a lot of folks. I don't think we have ever once came close to covering all of the material. Oh, never, never, never. Uh, even, and we've went as long as what? An hour and ten, 15, hour and 20, 20 25 or something like that even on George then, Floyd. It was yeah, a long episode. Even then, we had considerable material that we weren't able to cover. But you're right. Part of it's probably because we spend so much time BSing to begin with. Uh, we could cut down on that and 
be able to cover a little more. But somewhere along the line, there's got to be a little bit of human interest in it as well. Sure. Of, the other uh, one good point that we had from a, cli- uh, a client, <laughs> tell I'm still in work mode, yeah. uh, uh, one of our listeners, is that they really appreciated you bringing up the local sports story for the shoes. Yep. And wanted us to, because we do have a huge following in Kentucky, by far the biggest. Usually it's Kentucky, it's Tennessee, then weirdly, California and New York, and then Georgia um, is, is usually pulling up the rear somewhere as far as the numbers go. Um, and we say this all the time, I'm just going to say it again. If you told me, what, seven months now ago that we're going to do a podcast, we're going to make it happen. And then by the, it, within seven months, we're going to be in eight, eight countries, 20, three. Nine, 23 three, states. Okay. I think it's 29 because we've had a few different ones. So 29, 29 different states, over 650 downloads. I'd have told you you're crazy. Uh, I totally um, agree. And we do that because you guys listen and download and then listen and then download. And we appreciate and it And because so Mr. Mike. Flies and downloads. And talked to Mike today. Um, sent him a text, and uh, I just said, "Hey, Mike, you're awesome." That's all. And he sent me a text back. He said, "Ah, I'll have to go to more states." <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "Okay, if that's all it takes, let's make it happen." Yeah, really. But uh, tonight's topic, I think we should probably just get into it pretty quick. Um, Voluntary euthanasia. I will say this: when you were covering it talking about what we were going to cover a few minutes ago you brought up a couple of examples that to me totally exemplifies the way that i feel you mentioned your dog harold gene that you had to put down a few months ago you mentioned some friend of yours that had to put theirs down more recently it was a kitty cat gotcha (laughs) that's my question if we are willing to do this for our pets why in the world would we not do it for those that we love and care about the most or our immediate family, our spouse, our mother, our father. That's what I don't get. This is something that we will do for our pets, but we still have a huge debate in society over whether or not it should be allowed uh, for us to do this with, with human beings. Well, some states, Oregon, Washington, Vermont, I think is the other one here in the United States. And there's one other that I'm more. There's 10, I I think. Is there 10? Uh, Colorado, D.C., Hawaii, Maine, New Jersey, New Mexico, Oregon, Vermont, and Washington. Oh, that's a lot. Well, those states you can have the conversation. Yes. Um, Australia is a state or country that you can do it in. Um, and it's when you Not talk all about of it for them. No. A couple of Victoria. Um, a couple of their provinces. Western Australia. Yes. But there are a few absolute countries the Netherlands, Belgium, Luxembourg, Colombia. Canada, I think Spain very recently enacted laws allowing it. Uh, so yes, it is allowed in a few places. And most of those places, when you speak of voluntary human euthanasia, it's usually called the right to die with dignity. Yep. Um, and that is the medical profession's uh, terminology that they use. Um, do you think this is an actual we, – we often debate on this show federal versus state, state versus federal. I actually believe that this is one of those things that is a state's rights issue. Really? I think the states have the ability to make that decision for themselves. Maybe. I, not maybe. Absolutely. They have the right ability. Right or wrong different. Uh, should it be that way? Yeah, I think so. I think any well, anytime you can get the states have the more the bulk of the authority in making decisions for their 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 people. Uh, I think that's always most of the time is a good thing. Yeah, maybe. Um, one thing that I wasn't aware of until I did some of this research was it is possible in America for you to let's say you had a spouse who was terminally ill. She had been given a few months to live. She's in incredible pain. And you decided to do this, to allow her to use voluntary euthanasia to end the pain, to die with dignity. And let's say that you lived in a state where it wasn't legal and you chose to travel to 
uh, New Mexico or one of the states where it is, and you did it and came back to your home state. It's possible that you have actually violated laws in your home state and may be charged. Really? Yes. Hmm. I don't think that. That's where it begins to get extremely bad that we have so many different sets of laws. Yeah. When you leave that. it up to every state. So overall, I agree with states' rights. I'm a huge believer in, in states' rights. Uh, somewhere along the line, you, something shouldn't be legal in one state and you have the possibility of going to prison for it when you go back home. Right. Well, I get that. I can I can certainly see that. But I wouldn't I, – I can see that, but I necessarily wouldn't just because I see that, don't give that power to the federal government um, because that's a power that's easily abused, especially by our federal government. <laughs> and this is not an easy topic, one way or the other. No, it's, it's not. And – you know, we were talking off air yesterday when we were hammering down, not yesterday, day before yesterday, when we were figuring out, okay, this is what we're actually going to do. This is the topic we're going to cover. Um, and I got some things that, some questions that I'll pose to you. Sure. Um, and, and this is the one thing that is going to blow your mind in a second. Okay. I'll, I'll leave it for last. And I'll explain to you why I think it ultimately comes down to it and, and why that um, I think that as with many laws that are on the books, the insurance companies have a big say so in it. Vested interest. Um, yes. So anyway, the, the, the word euthanasia, did you see the meaning, the origin of the word? No, I haven't looked it up. It's a Greek word. It means a good death. Ah, so if you're an or perhaps word yeah. or description for the word, I think yeah. a good death. Uh, that would also be one of my big arguments for it is a good death, the death with dignity. I would also mention this, that there's two different types of euthanasia. There is active and there is inactive. Active euthanasia is defined as anything that you have done to introduce something that causes death. Whether it's a bullet to the brain, a, if you decided to cut your wrist, if you took medicine, all those are things that you introduced. You actively did something that caused death. Now, that, we'll get into, more, into this more in a little bit, but this is the one that we have a hard time deciding which way to go. The other one, passive euthanasia. Passive means we're withholding something. So if we withhold treatment, or supportive measures. So in other words, if we're keeping someone alive with mechanical means, a ventilator, uh, life support, life support, or even if it's simply a person with cancer who gets to the point that they say, no, I've had enough. I've done enough. I'm not, no more chemo. Send me home. Let me die peacefully. There's very, very few people who says that that's wrong. Right. I've actually had in my previous I've dealt with that a lot when sure. I worked with the healthcare industry. Um, What's the difference? Both have the same result. Both ends up with, you, with this person being dead. Yeah. Both are euthanasia. One is passive and one is active. One, we almost universally say, oh, that's fine. That, that's okay. Everyone has the right to decide if that medical treatment should be for them or not. But the other one, no, that, that, that suddenly we get really... We can't make up our mind of whether or not that should even be. Allowed. Well, I think it's going to have a big, I think part of that, unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on how you look at it, is in one of my big four questions. Okay. First question is, um, how much of it is care? And by care, I mean medical care, family care. How much of what is care? How much of the decision is care? Oh. You know, um it should be 100% or otherwise I'm, right. I'm against it. Right. I agree. I yeah. agree. If it if it's something that can be – there are some states, and if, if I'm wrong, I'm pretty sure I read the report I was reading. Some states will actually allow you to do a medically assisted suicide when there's nothing wrong with you. I think – No, none of the United States. I think that I read that. No. Okay. Well, we'll come back to that. I don't um, think so. But even with the uh, the one thing that I thought was really weird or neat about this 
is even with the states that in the countries that have laws on the books, right. only like 0.2% of the people actually use it. Um, the second question is how much of it is profit? And we're going to get to that in a second. Like what is profit? The end, people of, dying? End, end of life care. Right. Oh, end of life care? Yeah. Yeah. And then how much of that decision, when we go into that decision, is religion-based? You know, uh, there is a huge debate on whether, and one of our listeners brought it up, where in the Bible does it say that we're not, we shouldn't have a good death, <laughs> where we should suffer? Right. We looked, we couldn't find anywhere in there. The only thing is, is if some people see this as murder. Right. Suicide is murder to some people. Uh, and the reason is, I don't think matters. Some people would look at this as breaking one of the Ten Commandments. Thou shalt not kill. Let me just throw this at you real quick. Sure. In the United States, we spend an absolutely mind-blowing amount of money on health care costs. We've talked many times about how our health care costs compared to the rest of the uh, first world nations is astronomical already. Right. And we still have a very poor quality of care overall. overall. Not how, very poor, but not nearly the very top. Right, right. How We spent, as an example, so la, in, in 2018, Americans spent $3.65 trillion on health care. Trillion with a T. That's a huge number. You could probably take the gross domestic product of over half of the world combined. It doesn't equal that number. Over $365 billion of that went to end of life care. That's a lot. That's a, that's a huge chunk of money. Um, and, and the question was posed, uh, are we getting our money's worth? <laughs> if... And I'll put this very personally, because when we decide to do this topic, I start rolling around in my head. Well, what would I do in that situation? Where, if if it were available to me, where would I be with that? Because you have some folks who believe, from a, a religious perspective, um, at what point do you take away the opportunity for God's miracle? Right. right. Yeah. Um, and that happens. It happens in the world. But um, I, you said it. I thought you said it very well. well God's strong enough. If it, you were meant to happen, he could bring you back. <laughs> From the dead. You know, the so. You're dead. Would not would, stop would not, God. Would not, was, would not stop that miracle. That was his intent and purpose, yes. But um, with that, you know, I've seen what cancer can do to a patient. I saw my uncle right before I went to get, I seen him five days before he, 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 he passed was one quarter. If that of the man that he used to be, this man was huge. Six, six, four, six, three, 300, 320 pounds. And in five, and the, five days away, he probably, if he weighed a hundred pounds, I'd be surprised. And one thing that gets me is, when you, and I actually saw some statistics, Pew Research back in 2005 or 2006 did a huge study on this. Uh, and it's also in their study. The people who have to help support people go through terminal illness and especially cancer overwhelmingly support voluntary euthanasia. Why? Because they've seen the hell that it puts people through. It's one thing to say that this man lost 50, 60, 70% of his weight. It's one thing to say that he was a shell of his former self. It's another thing to be there day in and day out and to watch the hellish process that he goes through before he finally gets the comfort of death. Yeah. Yeah, it's bad. It is. And here's, here's a few of the things that I also asked. Um, and, and we, we can talk about these, which, and I don't know what the state's laws are. I didn't get into that detail. I didn't want to say I'm wrong. And there's so many, there's so many different varied varieties. Um, so I didn't want to be that guy that came on here and said a bunch of stuff. And they're like, oh, no, that's not the right, that's the other state. So 
What qualifies? Which diseases? Is it just cancer? Is it no, Alzheimer's? No, no, neither one. It is has it, nothing to do with the disease. It just I has think to you're do. looking at it wrong. Okay. It has to do with, in most countries, in most states where this is allowed, number one has to be a terminal illness. Your terminal illness could be a cold. It doesn't need to be cancer. It doesn't need to be anything. It's a terminal illness. When you're diagnosed with having something from which you have zero chance of recovering from, you are in great pain that they are not able to give you comfort from. There's a point to which they, they can't treat pain. Cancer patients, from what I've heard, they go through a living hell. Yeah. Uh, so those are the two and, main and sometimes, and, uh, you know, and I didn't mean to cut you off, That's but it, with cancer, a lot of times the treatments are worse than yeah. the disease. Many I cases. mean, <laughs> uh, Brett says, in my opinion, this is Brett's opinion. Uh, you can listen to us live every Wednesday, just like Brett. Uh, Brett says, in my opinion, those who are suffering and can still have joy, that joy can only be from God. So anyway, what was you saying back to what you were saying? Sorry. Um, your question, I think, was about which diseases qualify, right, right. and I'm saying it doesn't matter. The name yeah. of the disease doesn't matter. It, it's the what outcome. it's doing to you. What the outcome to you is right. the number one. Is it going to kill you? Do you have any chance of recuperating? Another thing that is usually considered is what is the chance that medical science will be able to come up with a cure within the time period we think this person has left. Sure, that's also looked at. Yeah. So again. If there is, if you have a terminal illness, they don't believe that medical science has any chance of being able to come up with a cure within your lifetime. And again, when you look at, you know, in the United States, the FDA, the approval time required for a drug is extremely long. Unless it's a COVID drug. Even then, it was how long? <laughs> quite some time. We had yeah. COVID around for quite some time before that was uh, brought to the market. But so, yes, it does not matter what the name of the disease is. It's, it's a question of what's it going to do to you. Sure. Okay. Well, who gets to make the decisions? I think it's got to be of, of whether or not you qualify. In the states that allow this, if I'm not mistaken, it's usually two doctors, not one, two. Two, not nurses, not um, midwife. Two doctors are required to fill out forms and say, that you meet the criteria, which is basically what I just said, that you have a terminal illness. There is belief that there is zero belief that medicine will become available within your expected lifetime to help you, that you are in excruciating pain, and that this is uh, done out of pity more so than anything else. It's not, you know, you, you mentioned a couple of things that are certainly very important and need to be looked at. What is economic? There's a lot of people that we need to examine their economic belief, uh, their, their economic concern. What is family members? First of all, who, who's asking for this? It's one thing if the person is in a sound mind and body enough to say, hey, this is what I want. It gets far more complicated when it's children, when it's spouse, when it's someone else who might have a very viable economic interest to say, I've got debts I need paid off. I, you know, I would have a lot more money. I'd be a lot better off if this person were here. So, yes, if it's not the person directly, and even when it's the person directly, maybe they're under pressure from family members to do it. So it gets complicated pretty quickly. Uh, but economic reasons are one. Another reason, in many cases, in many countries, medical care is limited. Hospital beds, number of doctors. There is, in many cases medical personnel who are putting pressure on people and they're thinking if you would leave and get out of here (laughs) you have no choice you have no chance of surviving if you weren't here we might have a hospital bed open to save someone yeah there's a lot of different things and those should not be the things that are considered to answer your question to me it absolutely should come back to is this the right thing to do for this person well i was going to say I I feel much more comfortable being two doctors and the person it directly affects. (laughs) If if you have power of attorney over someone, I don't know that you get Uh, into some really, really hairy situations. And from a medical standpoint, 
the power attorney decision is the decision. Yes. You know, at that point when someone has taken power of attorney, that is the power to make that decision. And if we go back to, there's two types of euthanasia, active and passive. Right. We, for many years, have had no problem using power of attorney for the passive right. and saying this was mom's wish and desire. She yeah. did not wish to be kept alive. For many years, we've had no problem with that. But those are usually backed by some sort of will or DNR, do not resuscitate order. Many times, but not always, and it's not required. That's true. One of my, uh, I'll just tell this real story real quick, and it, it's right along the lines of passive. I had this patient when I worked, I worked used to work for APRI Healthcare years ago um, in Louisville. I had this patient for a couple of years, uh, nice lady, uh, obviously not going to mention any names, but um, stage four cancer. She had had cancer and beat it two or three times, had COPD, smoked for her whole life. Um, I went to see her every week drop off oxygen tank, swap out, whatever. And uh, went there one day and I was like, how you doing, Mrs.? And I'm using Smith. That's obviously not her name, just so everybody knows. No HIPAA violations here today. Uh, how you doing, Mrs. Smith? And I'm here to switch, switch out your tanks or whatever. She goes, well, everything's there in the corner. And I look and she wasn't lying. Everything was there in the corner. Her, her oxygen machine, her tanks, her uh, everything that she'd used except her hospital bed. And uh, I was like, what are you doing? She goes, well, I just got back from the doctor yesterday and stage four cancer's back in my lungs. And, you know, I'm not going through chemo anymore. So I was like, well, what can I do for you? What can, what can I, you know, is there anything I can do for you? And she's like, just pray with me. So we sit there for 20 minutes and prayed and, and I loaded all her stuff up and I never saw her again. Back to what you say. She made the decision that I'm done. I'm tired. I'm not going through chemo again. I just got my hair back. <laughs> this is the way I, this is my choice. And, you know, I have no problem with that, you know, because, because at that point, um, she's still of sound mind. She has made the decision. I'm sure she's made that decision either with the, 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 the knowledge that her doctor says, we can still do the chemo. We can still do the radiation. You're, you're not going to qualify for surgery. There's nothing to take out. We've already done all that. Um, so they could have prolonged her life probably by a short that, period of time. And at what quality Absolutely. of life? That, that's so my, my question is, what is the difference in that? And, and you said you had absolutely no problem with it, and neither would I. Neither would pretty much anyone I know. No. And what is the difference in that in someone who says, you know what? I'm not that fortunate. I'm not to the point where if I just don't do their treatments, I'm going to pass away very shortly. Yeah. I could linger on for a few months, all the while going through extreme, excruciating pain. What's the difference in allowing this person to get help from a physician to write them a prescription for something that they could take a couple of pills and end it? I don't see the difference. It ends up in exactly the same result. Both of them have are done for the same reason. Yeah. My, the quality, the part of my life that has a decent quality is over. I'm to the point now when I'm simply saying, okay, enough. I, I don't want to fight this anymore. It's not worth it. Well, anybody who's ever been in a nursing home would probably agree with you. Now there are huge amounts of assisted living programs and, and nursing. There's a, a million nursing homes that are amazing. But if you've ever been to one of the bad ones, and I have, <laughs> I can understand that sure. and would be in that same boat, That's even true. if, and here's where it gets sketchy for me. You have Mrs. Smith there, and she's in a nursing home, and she's completely alone. Her family's abandoned her. They're there, but they're never there. Mm -hmm. um, she's just going to die of old age. She doesn't have any medical things. What do you think about that? When she just says, I just one day, I eh, can't. I'm, I'm pretty well done because because I that becomes be okay with that. that's the difference between euthanasia and then assisted suicide, right? Sure, I would agree with that. I can't be okay with that. I, the only thing that I would be okay with is two criteria that, as far as I know, is the law in every United States state that allows it. It is number one a, term, a terminal illness. And number two, that sufficient pain to cause a quality of life 
that in their opinion, and the doc, two doctors are saying they agree, means that they have a far substandard quality of life. Uh, if you can meet those two criteria, I don't have a problem with it. Other than that, real quickly, we end up playing God. And some people look at even this as playing God. Well, that was my, took the next statement out of my mouth because a lot of people view it that way. Some would. Uh, although, my point, you know, medical science has come a long way. And I don't believe that God is, wants us to... Again, when we were talking about our pets to begin with, this is something that we would do to our own pets. So if we don't have enough compassion to do to our mother and father, our spouse, that we would with our pets, I don't understand. It. Yeah. I, I don't think that that's biblical. I don't think God wants us doing that to the people that we love so much. I, I wouldn't disagree. I wouldn't disagree. That would be my answer. Um <laughs> yep. Um, well, I I just think. What about this? And let me let me pose this question to you. If you are looking at just the numbers, and you're a healthcare professional, and you're thinking I could save three hundred and sixty five billion dollars on end of life care if I push these old these people out the door. <laughs> um. First of all, I don't think insurance companies or any medical facility would do that because they're bilking the insurance companies for all this money. They're getting $365 billion for you being sick. Yep. Which, in, in another show, we can get into the details of how hospitals and doctor's offices really want you to stay sick. Pharmaceuticals especially want you to not be cured but to feel better from whatever it is that ails you. The last part, I hope, <laughs> is... The, the problem. The first part you mentioned doctors. I certainly hope doctors don't feel that way because if it is, then you got the wrong doctor. Right. Uh, period. Now, obviously, the industry as a whole is going to feel far differently. Uh, but yes, there's certainly economic concerns, like we mentioned earlier. There's a lot of economic concerns. Uh, and, and However you do this, you're going to have to try to make sure that we have certain safeguards to protect people from uh, making sure whether it's the, some workers at the hospital trying to make room for some other person they could possibly help uh, or some family member that's saying, you know, your quality of life isn't very good and there's still some money left, so, you know, it might be better. We, we have to make sure that this is about the quality of life of the person, nothing else. So at what point? There was a story in, and I forget which state, young lady, mid-30s, had two kids, was dying of breast cancer. Still, when she chose to, to pursue this, was very active. Wasn't at the stage yet that it had even become painful. She was now, just when you say discovered. chose to pursue this, chose to end her life right then? Within a couple, within a year. Okay. While she still had two young children. Um, and, and I, I Obviously, the kids are there, but they're, they are, you know, this is her decision. She's married, got two kids, husband's going to take care of the children, supported his wife in this decision because she hadn't even started to do anything that even required her to lose her hair at that point and decided, no, is that too soon? I mean, should yes. there be a time? Well, most a, a states, do have a time. <laughs> states do have a time. Terminal illness with a diagnosis of six months or less is what most states require. Right. Uh, and again, they're going to require most states. I'm not going to say all. I do know that most states are going to require that. And two medical doctors to attest that that is the case. Yeah. Number one, that you do have this illness that you are saying you have. And number two, that they're in their medical opinion that you have an expected a life expectancy of six months or less. And to me, that that's the safeguard, the biggest ones. Gotcha. If you have that, then you've got a long you've gone a long way toward making sure it's done for the right reason. Sure, Brett asked a question, and, and it's a good question. Okay. Um, he says, "Question: Do you all think the same argument could be could be made for a child who has terminal illness? Illness now." I'm going to assume a couple of things because obviously we're not talking to Brett; he's texting. Uh, child younger than 
you know. I don't know that it matters. Uh, well, young enough to not. Uh, under to, 12, I'm sure. Sure, under 12. Yeah. We'll say who has no idea what terminal means, who has no idea what, what the future holds. So it would definitely be a parent making that decision. Again, to me, it's back to the same two uh, things. Number one, to qualify, you're going to have to have a terminal illness with an expect a life expectancy of six months or less. Um, you're going to have to have two doctors to attest to that. If that's the case, and you sit down and talk with the child, and I would, it depends on the age. If it's six months, obviously the child doesn't have a say. They're, they can't speak. Right. If the child is on the upper end of her age limit, if they're 10 or 11, to me at that point, you absolutely should have the child buying into it, or otherwise I wouldn't. I, there's no way I could agree to this if it was a 10-year-old child saying, no, I don't want it. Yeah. I can't. Brent, you've put me in a men mental state that I never, I am so blessed and thankful I never had to be oh, absolutely. in. absolutely. Um, but here's the other flip side of that question. If you had a child with a, a terminal illness and the doctors are saying they have six months or less to live, there's no chance for survival. There's no chance for us to find a cure. And they're in agonizing pain every moment of their life. How much do you love them if you say, you know what, I love them so much I can't let go. I insist that they continue to bear this pain for me. Yeah, no, I, I don't disagree with what you're saying either, Jerry. I it's just, the, I, you're am, right. I'm glad I never had um, to face absolutely. Any like I would, I, I, I don't even know because you, yeah, <laughs> you've made me speechless, Brett. You have done something that hardly anybody in this world's ever done. Made me speechless. But I just, it, it becomes a, a selfish versus a selfless thing, you know, and, and I, I, I would like to think that I would love my kid enough to let them go. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. But I am so glad I'm not in that situation. 100%. <laughs> I, I, I just. Totally agree. I can't imagine. You know, they say that. Uh, that's got to be one of the worst things in life. and It's just not the way life is supposed to work. No, we're not, sure. not supposed to outlive our children. And not only for that to happen, but to be the one to have to make that decision, mm. I can't even imagine. No. No, me either. So many times we uh, have so much to be thankful for and take it all for granted. And things like this, decisions like this around the world are happening every day. You know, and you're absolutely right. Thank God that we're not one that had to make them. But uh, far too many parents have to uh, make decisions like this. Certainly a terrible thing, and I'm glad that I never had to make the decision. Yeah, I, it, it's this isn't an easy topic. And obviously we could go on for hours and hours and hours debating the, the ins and the outs of it, the money of it. Um, One thing chemo is not a fun thing, no. especially when we're talking. If we just s drill it down to cancer, chemo is not a fun thing. Radiation is not a fun thing. The good news is, and there is a, there is some light at the end of this tunnel. Every single day, the treatments are getting better. Every single day, things are extending our lives. Now, um, are those all good? No, but. Um, are they getting better every day? Yes. Uh, we have worldwide the capacity for humans to learn and to grow and to become better. I mean, think about this. We now have a robot that can surgically go in with no control and pick out the cancer in a human being. A hundred years ago, we would cut off their arm and use leeches. For the same type of situation. <laughs> and when you mentioned cut off their arm, you didn't mention the uh, anesthesia that we had available at that time. Which was whiskey and a hard, like a leather it was belt. a leather to bite on. <laughs> so we're going to amputate your leg. Here's a shot of Jack and here's a piece of leather to bite on. Yeah. And, oh, we're not using a rotary saw that'll have it over quick either. We're using a hacksaw. That we have to do for 15, 20 minutes. You know, that was less than a hundred, that was a hundred years ago we were doing that. 
Yeah, or we, had, we would, we would, sorry guys, we just had to throw that last part in for those that didn't think this was a dark enough, yeah, bad enough. <laughs> well, topic. I think you that's a, you're right. You're absolutely it's a, right. It's a, it's an amazing thing. Sure, absolutely. You know, we were, we were feeding kids mercury because we thought it would cure something at yep. some point. Um, and now look where we're at. You know, it, it, is it, is it perfect? No. But do we continue to learn every day and and get better? Yes. And, and the one good thing, this is one part in the world that, as a human, we can all be proud of, because doctors in Britain, and doctors in America, and doctors in Finland are all working together to make it better for everyone. Okay. So it's not one of those crazy things that, oh well, we're better than you on this, so we're going to do this. You know. So I just and all this is working, obviously. When you look at average life expectancy and see that the numbers continually go up, up, up. And there occasionally, I've not heard, but was COVID big enough to change that? No, I don't at, think so. At all? I don't think so. There has been a few things. Uh, the Spanish influence of 1919, I think, was big enough, although that killed, what, 50 million people? Yeah, so was the plague. Uh, the, the plague, obviously, <laughs> different times in history. Th- there have been things to change that trajectory somewhat, but overall... In the last 150 years, average life expectancy is just trending drastically upwards right. almost everywhere in the world. So. And so, and to put that in perspective, say license, life expectancy right now is 92 for the average male. Yeah, the last three years of that might not be so good. But now you're all the way up to 89, then it's pretty darn good. Yep. Wasn't that way 10 years ago? Absolutely. Jerry, before we leave... I've worked really hard to figure out how to become a wealthier, more well-rounded individual. In doing so, I went into seven billionaires' houses did. and asked them what their secret of success was. And their answer? They all told me the same thing. How'd you get in my house? <laughs> yep, I can imagine. Imagine that would be a pretty common sentiment. Sorry, I couldn't leave this show on this bad, sad note. I just can't do it. I have a hard time sleeping at night. I promise next week will be a far happier topic. Yes. Unless we decide to make it about Donald Trump, and then it'll be even worse. So. Oh, jeez. You and your Trump, anti-Trump. <laughs> Whoo-wee. Well, that's good. Sad but true. Uh, in a couple of weeks, we'll have Clay. Uh, three weeks now. Clay will be joining us uh, September, the week of September 11th um, for a great show about surveillance on a national level. <laughs> Which is where the really scary stuff is happening. NSA, CIA, we're talking to you guys. I'm pointing right. at the microphone. We're talking to you. <laughs> um, Jerry, what else you got? That's it. I'm glad we covered the topic. Um it was a topic that both of us felt needed to be covered. I'm glad that it's over. Yeah, me too. And what do you think about, does this need more news coverage? Because I it absolutely I had, needs more. I had to dig to find some of the it articles. It doesn't get a lot of coverage. I it think doesn't. it does need more. We have several states in the United States where it is allowed. But once again, how many people have the ability, the resources at the end of life, if you're not fortunate enough to be in one of those states, that have the resources to be able to travel? How many people feel like doing it? And again, for some people, if you do travel and you take a spouse or a child with you, it's possible that they're going to face legal repercussions when they come back to their home state. So just the fact that you're close to a state that allows it doesn't mean that it's okay and and you'll be okay. You know, you talk about that, and I think that we definitely need to make this a future show because it's very similar in that respect. We can drive to Colorado right now, load our car up with goody goodies, baked goods, and come back to Kentucky and totally get arrested for transportation of illegal substances. Yeah. Um, and that's another one but of those things. That, that one I get. You brought a product back to your state that is illegal. In this case, you go get a service, and the service is 100% performed in another state. You come back to your state, you're bringing nothing with you. Does that work between Virginia and Kentucky with the massage parlors? What do you mean? 
How can I get a massager between two states? No, no. If you go to, if you leave the state of Kentucky to go back yeah. to one of your favorites in Virginia. Oh, I trust me. I've got favorites in both states. I need to travel. Guys, we are so happy you all were here with us today and have downloaded and listened to this. Thank please, you so much. Please reach out to us at Newsworthy with Steve and Jerry at gmail.com. We'd love to hear from you. We'll talk to you soon. You all have an awesome night. Take care. Thanks.